For this video we continue our look at the nodes that are located under the function subcategory. And as you can see on the screen the, the node that we're focusing on is the switch node. And the switch node is a good way of changing direction on your program but it's also a good way of you know, blocking uh, the flow uh, waiting for user interaction or for a value to be reached. So it's, a, it's another commonly used node and you can see under here we have the message payload and we have various rules that we, we can apply. Now some of these are more complicated than, than others like this sequence rules. I need to do a little bit more research on those. I haven't used those before. Um, and then of course your, your JSON expression you're getting into a, a little bit of uh, JSON code there. So we're going to start looking at what I would call the basic to, to medium complicated functions. So let's start, let's delete this. The first one we're going to have a look at is um, uh, the function to have three separate outputs depending on the number coming in. So what I've done here, I'm using the brace basic rule, so less than 20, so my message payload, I'll come onto the inject nodes in a minute. If the value is between 21 and 99, and then if the value is greater than 100 and I have three separate debugs here 20, 50 and 100 and I have three separate outputs from the switch my injects you can see I'm going to inject 20, 50 or 100 so we'll have a look at our debug window it's open here now if I click on the inject 20 and look at my message I can see that I'm using debug 20 so it's, it's taken this route here and the payload is 20 and the topic is low. The topic I have set here in the inject node. So there, that's going through this debug. If I then click on the inject 50, that's my middle. Um, and you can see my payload there and there's my debug 50. And then again, if I do uh, 100, I've got high debug 100. So I've got three separate outputs depending on, on what the number is coming in. So it's a good way of splitting um, my code. The next one is relatively easy to understand Boolean. So Boolean is a, a, is a logic 1 or a logic 0. It's a bit. Uh, it's represented here on the inject node. You can select Boolean, true, and I've given it a topic. And if you have a look inside my switch, I've added two rules, one is true, the other one is boolean false, and then I've got two separate debugs again labelled true and false. So I'll clear this, it's already been deployed, and if I click on true, I get my message come through that says true, because okay, that's the boolean state, my topic is true, and I can see that my debug Again, if I do it with false, everything will be coming through this debug here. So, again, splitting my my outputs depending on a Boolean state. Now, I can create a little bit of a block. Now, I've used this as an example. I've got two here, username and password. So, if I have a look at the rule that I've set first. So, I'm looking for a string that contains this house. This is my um, password, but it could be any password that you make up. And it needs to, to match exactly. So if we have a look here, I have house, house lowercase, Jones and Smith are the strings that I'm injecting. If I inject Smith, I'm not getting anything coming through to my debug. Jones, again, nothing. House, well, it's spelt the same, but it needs to be exactly the same. This is where it would be good for password recognition. Now, if I do house with a capital H, you can see now that I get that, that passed through. So that's uh, a way of blocking, and you can do that on numbers or anything. I'm just doing it for string. And then we have this other function, which is similar, um, uh, matches rejects. I'm not actually sure what that means, but it gives me the, the option here to ignore case. So I can type in the the username as house and if we come down here 
I've got um, different usernames, but if you go back to this, I've put it all in capitals, look. But here, my string is capital H and the rest is lowercase. I've told it not to be case sensitive. So if I do Smith, nothing, Jones, and then House, it's come through. Um, it's recognizing the characters, but not the case. And then the last one that I wanted to show you here is the switch on null. So what does that mean? It means, have I got any data coming through? If you have a look at this inject node, it's just injecting, but there's no message coming through. And then on this one, I'm just injecting the timestamp, so there is something coming through. And again, I've got debug null and debug not null. That's what the slash, I couldn't put a line over the null, so it's not null. So it's empty. Okay, so if I clear all that, click on empty, I get my message coming through on null, but there's there's no message object there because I haven't set anything on my inject. This time I'm going to do the timestamp and that's coming through on not null. So you can just see the, the slash there. There is another option here that says empty not empty. I tried to have a play with this. Uh, I'll probably do it on another video. So if you go to the information for this node and in the manual You'll see down here a section re referring to this empty function. So it's talking about that it can test the length of strings and arrays or buffers. So I will come back to that because we haven't touched buffers or arrays on any of our videos yet. So I'll set that up and, and test that on, on a separate video. And the only other one that we haven't done, if I come back to my switch node here, I'm just going to put a blank one in you can actually get it to switch on type. So is it a string? Is it a number, boolean, array, buffer? Okay, so all of these you can get it to, to, to switch on. So it's just checking the data format coming through and it will block anything if it doesn't match that rule. Um, and you can get it so it continues to run that rule or it stops after the first match. So it's, this is where it you know it's quite powerful, but there you have it, an overview of the basic functionality of the switch node. Another node you'll probably use quite a lot because it diverts the, the root of your flow quite nicely. But for now, thanks for listening. Don't forget to click on the like and notification button and um, hope to see you again soon.